thanks Kev. Congratulations from I think from from all of us on this call and from from having that evening post. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Hi, uh, Kevin. Uh, Kevin, do you feel almost you've become a global ambassador for your cause now? It's reached such a, a broad spectrum. Everyone here over here in Ireland is very much aware of your cause and it's spoken around uh, the Munster, Munster Rugby, Leinster Rugby, Connacht Rugby. All the, all the province in Ireland seem to be aware of, of what you're doing as well. So in terms of that global appeal, are you sort of taken back by it? Yeah, massively. I, I think... It, it's really nice um, that you mentioned that. I know um, Munster have had their own challenges um, with MND previously. And um, for people to, re well, to receive messages of support and letters and emails and text messages from all over the world has, has been um, really, really kind. Um, that obviously has never been the driver, but um, the fact that people are, have a greater awareness and are better educated now and the reach is going further and, and far, um, I think that can only be a good thing for, for MND, for people with MND, for, for families who have lost people through MND. And I hope they understand that people do care about people who've been challenged by this horrific disease because you can ask every one of the team uh, from Monday and Tuesday it would back me up 100% they just want to help it, it's not about um, no they just want to help that, that's it they want to help you know they all took time off work they all sacrificed themselves and and they put themselves through you know forget me and Dave who ran who brought those on the bikes those who stayed up for all those hours doing whatever role they was fulfilling it was a huge team effort and you asked anyone you ask any one of them would they do it again and they'd be there in a heartbeat and finally for me kevin uh, do you feel these challenges that you're going on now are probably bigger challenges when you were competing uh, for titles in the height of uh, your rugby league career with either with united uh, with the uk with great britain uh, are these sort of obstacles now that you're facing that you feel that you're, you're, you're sort of striving uh, to beat something that is, dare I say, it's like Mount Everest, you're trying to climb that feat? Uh, it's different. It's very different. I think um, whilst, whilst you're playing, it's your job. And you can put all that time and effort into your preparation and things away from your training that are really, really important. Nutrition, your sleep, your lifestyle are really, really important. Um, the difficulty part now is trying to do some of that still whilst having a full-time job and you know albeit I'm still in rugby and I'm, and I'm coaching now you still have a very different life to what you would have as a player so managing the two is is very very different um, I love my playing days um, I think my playing days absolutely and the experiences I had during my playing days absolutely set me up for the last two challenges. You know, being able to draw on some of those really tough moments as a player have, have helped me get through and, and dig in. Um, whether they are bigger or better, or I just think they're different. I, I, they challenge you in a slightly different way. But the one thing I am really pleased about is being back in the team. Um, and being back in a team that is facing a difficult challenge and sometimes against the odds and sometimes um, it don't quite work out as you plan but you just find a way to get it done and there were a number of finals we played in as a group or test matches where it, you know things don't go to plan but good teams find a way to win and, and you know it, was it about winning on Monday and Tuesday? No, it was about completing and raising awareness and raising funds but we found a way